Hi. How you doing, guys? This is Kira Gaunt, Dr. Gaunt of the Black Girl YouTube Project that me and my anthropological analysis class are um, immersing ourselves in through participant, participant observation, following in the footsteps of Dr. Mike Wesch, Dr. Michael Wesch from Kansas State University and his students who started this whole digital ethnography project back in like 2007. And there doesn't seem to be many um, significant projects of that nature yet um, by other people. Like there's so much that could be said about YouTube as the largest video sharing archive on the planet, okay, in the virtual planet, the internet. Um, there's so much data as far as what people upload and what people share and how those connections are made on YouTube among people who identify as YouTubers. Um, whether they're new, like the people in my class, the 18 research assistants and I, or, um, and I'm not new to YouTube, but I'm new to content creation on YouTube. I've been dabbling with it for a long time, but never any, in any concerted effort. So those of us who, um, I've lost my train of thought, those of us who really want to do participant observation have to create content on YouTube. So, um, I swear I have ADD. <laughs> um, I wanted to tell you guys, since uh, I'm go off to the Society for Ethnomusicology's annual conference in Indianapolis, where I'm going to be giving a paper on black girls and twerking on YouTube, um, while my students remain in the classroom today building up their projects. And we've been having some difficulty putting the scripts together. And what I learned last week, because I made my own video, I just dove in instead of thinking about what I wanted to say, I just started creating. And the kind of maker culture that came about, you start thinking differently when you make the video. Instead of talking about what you think you want to put in the video, it starts to make you think about doing a skit or performing. And it's different when you're putting the video together um, than when you're just in somebody else's video and when you get to define what you want to say. Um, you know what's funny? As I touch my hair, it reminds me, I got my first flame on my video. Someone said, you look like a man. And I immediately wanted to respond like, F you. And I did, but then I was like, this is ridiculous. I don't want a bunch of flames on my, on my comments. So I deleted both his comment and mine. And it was an anonymous person. They didn't even have a profile. Um, so there's these kind of, you know, flamethrowers who can come by and do whatever they want. You can't identify who they are. Not a part of the community, not interested. So um, uh, back to what I was saying. Um, in the video that I made, so I made, um, uh, I made a, my first, one of my first vlogs got circulated on Twitter this past week by a guy named Hank Norman. This is his, i use my um, iPad. I think you can see it if it'll focus. There he is, I think, right there. Um, he said to his followers, you know, watch my Black Girl YouTube vlog, which talks about context collapse. And uh, he says, you can create connection through time and space at curiosity um, and put two hashtags, the, the hashtag is um, content collapse instead of context collapse. Eh, go figure. And uh, the other is let let it go, let go. Like, and let go is a great transition because Aries was talking about reading in the chapter that we read on participant observation this week um, by Tom Bolstorff and company, Nardi Pearson Taylor. We read chapter five, and she talked in class about you know how important it is to be vulnerable within the community. And that she made a YouTube vlog that she thought was really vulnerable, but then she didn't post it. And I've been noticing this about myself. Um, I've been avoiding making vlogs for the last few weeks. Then this guy comes and retweets my vlog. It's been five weeks, and I act like it's supposed to happen overnight. So in Mike Wish's YouTube and You article that we read, I think it's from 2011, he talks about that, you know, this medium, like me talking to the, to the camera and my webcam, even though I'm sitting in my apartment and there's no one here, it's um, 12 noon on a Tuesday or Wednesday, um, and I have no idea who might see it. There's this, what we call a context collapse. 
I have no idea who I'm talking to. I hope that somebody will listen. Um, and that this context collapse, um, I'm, I'm finding from what I've been noticing in, in thinking about black girls on YouTube, this context collapse is very insidious because there are people who I'm in conversation with who don't know me as, they may not even see me as a black person, but they may carry some um, stereotypes or some impressions about what a black woman should look like, I, I should look more feminine, uh, whatever that means, um, that people have social constructions about what they think their or social imagination that has been made up by the networks that they're in about who I am and that I assume that who I'm projecting into the webcam here is who I am, like, you know, who I am, not who you think I am, but we're always in dialogue with that. So there's a lot for you guys to pursue. I want you to know that if you could just start making your videos, don't sit in class and talk, just start making the videos. Once I, I did that over the weekend, I spent a good chunk of time just putting together YouTube clips, and I would say that is where to start. And don't forget that since you're a part of the YouTube community, talking to my research assistants and students, that your videos matter. In fact, they matter probably more than anything. And if there's anything that participatory culture is teaching me by participating, by observing how it functions, is that I can make a video in my apartment about five weeks ago, um, thinking I'm just talking to my students, nobody else is going to watch it. And some guy, because I've been tweeting some other things and I've been on social media, finds it. Thank you, Hank Norman, um, at Hank Norman on Twitter, um, and retweets it. And then I make a connection. And these connections in all cases, whether here on YouTube, between you and me, um, or on Twitter, or on Facebook, or whatever social media platform you're on, um, whatever participatory culture where it's easy access to get in, but it takes a while to establish community, all of them create what we call, Mike Wesh called, a deep and loose connection. So we can collapse time and space, yes, but we have this misconception that that is just going to create automatic um, connection. And actually, I think the old school values